Welcome to Tokyo, the boundless concrete jungle that radiates energy and never sleeps and is constantly in motion, bustling with citizens and tourists alike. Sometimes, however, we want to step away from the endless excitement and the limitless possibilities this city has to offer and catch a breath of fresh air. Now, Mount Takao is a popular mountain hotspot in the city of Hachioji on the outskirts of the west side of Tokyo. This location receives a lot of attention for its natural beauty, cultural heritage, and the views which can include Shinjuku's skyline and even Mount Fuji on the clearest of days. It comes with hiking, Endless dango snack opportunities. I recommend the soy sauce flavor with a little bit of salt. Amazing. The highest altitude beer garden in Tokyo, shrines, and even a monkey park. But is Mount Takao actually worth your time? I will certainly give you my opinion, but first let's explore and show you what it's all about. As always, we're going to be starting our trip with a train ride. And while you can take the KO line directly to Takao Sanguchi, which happens to be station code KO53, I will be maximizing my JR pass and instead taking the JR Chuo line from Shinjuku Station and making a quick transfer from Takao Station to Takao Sanguchi Station. The moment you leave your station on your very short journey to the base of the mountain, you are going to be greeted by posh coffee houses, soba restaurants, and some serious snacking opportunities. Temptation is everywhere. And if you let it, you may not even make it to the base of the mountain. I'm kidding, of course, but if you don't want to hike the 599.15 meters of elevation to get to the top, you do have the option to take a chairlift and or a cable car up the more strenuous part of the mountain. Now, the goal was to get out of the city and get some fresh air, and to me, that means hiking. And while there are a variety of different routes you can use to get to the top, I chose trail number one, the Omotesando Trail. The Omotesando Trail is the most popular as it passes some of the key lookouts, the lush vegetation, the massive Japanese cedar trees, the entrance to the Monkey Park, and all of the primary temples that you'd want to see. It's also worth mentioning that almost the entire trail was paved and to add to the luxury of the hike there are vending machines at various points around the mountain with ice cold refreshments. On my usual hikes I'm generally worried that an angry moose and or a hungry bear will be using me as a vending machine so this level of convenience is definitely something I could get used to. About halfway up the mountain, after climbing one or two stairs, we come across Yakuin Temple. This temple was built in 744, about when I was born, and restored in 1375. It is known for the Buddhist practice of Shugendo, also known as mountain asceticism, as well as its devotion to Tengu, the Shinto mythical stone figures believed to be messengers of the gods. Did I say one or two stairs? Clearly my memory is a little fuzzy, but once you conquer one or two more stairs here and there, you'll finally get to the iconic view from the top of the mountain. The view of course comes in two flavors, spring and fall. I went during the fall season as the colors in Japan at this time is truly a sight to behold. So is Mount Takao worth it? Honestly, from a tourism point of view, and especially if this is your first or even your second trip to Japan, I can't really recommend it. Not because there's anything wrong with the place. As you saw from the footage, the vegetation is gorgeous. You can do a little bit of hiking if you want to move your legs a little bit after being on a long flight. 
Uh, you know, you have lots of amenities. There's a monkey park. If you're traveling with kids, you're probably gonna love feeding those monkeys some snacks. The view is decent as well. The proximity to Tokyo is quite nice as well. Uh, but as far as Japan as a whole, as a tourist destination is concerned, the value for Mount Takao just isn't there to spend one of your very precious days. You know, Japan, is a tourism wonderland. Basically, whatever it is that you think that you can experience, you probably can, from skiing to hiking, you can go swimming in subtropical waters if that's what you're interested in, and the transportation and the food to get you there in style is also a thing, right? So, in that regard, you know, I went to Mount Takao for my very first time a couple months ago. I went for the fall colors, and even though I've seen so much of Japan already, it still felt a little bit underwhelming. It felt like I could have got more value and experienced much the same stuff as I did at Mount Cal to a higher degree in another place. I'm of course basing my opinion on just my perceived value of what a typical trip to Japan would look like. So your very generic setup, you know, 11 to 14 night stay. And depending on your itinerary, you might pick up a seven day JR pass or a 14 day JR pass if you're targeting a specific region can save a bit of money by getting the regional pass instead. And regardless of which choice you go with, if you have access to the bullet trains, the Shinkansen, you can basically reach about half the country within a two or three hour window. So the proximity thing about Mount Takao being close to Tokyo isn't so much of a big deal for tourists, in my opinion. It's fantastic for locals that don't have the luxury of spending more than 45 minutes or an hour to get to a place just to get a little bit of fresh air and move their legs. But for tourists, honestly, and especially if you're visiting Japan for the first time, every single option is available to you. The creme de la crop. You have the pool of only option A's so why pick an option B, which in my opinion is Mount Takao. However, my opinion really doesn't matter. So if everything you saw about Mount Takao is exactly what you want to do, then Mount Takao is an option A for you. So go there, enjoy your time. Let me know what your favorite snacks and activities were and how you enjoy the monkey park if you choose to go there. I'd love to hear it. Now, as far as nature and hiking is concerned, I would strongly recommend you check out Nagano Prefecture as an alternative. With the Shinkansen, it takes about 80 to 100 minutes to get you there, so it is very comparative with the travel time it would take you to get to Mount Takao. However, Nagano is in a league of its own as far as nature lover activities are concerned. I feel like Nagano is extremely underrated and definitely deserves a lot more exposure than it is currently getting. But as a result, a positive result, it's also going to be a lot less busy than Mount Takao, which when it comes to basically outdoor activities, I think is actually a positive. Now, that doesn't mean it doesn't get busy in Nagano either, you know, with national holidays, long weekends, things of that nature, it can be busy there too, but just a general comparison between two locations, I feel like Nagano is a lot more fresh, a lot more open, and that's always quite nice. It also has some of the best hiking that Japan has to offer. So, you know, if you are interested in a more extreme hiking experience, you want to go on a through hike, you want to go on a two or three day mountain adventure, Nagano is the place for you. It has some of the most beautiful scenery I have seen. And if you don't want to go through that grueling experience on your trip, worry not. Nature walks can also be had. Every level is accommodated for check out Karuizawa if that is what you would like instead. Some of the nature walks there are incredibly gorgeous, especially in the fall, but again with Japan, it's always a multi-season experience, so even in the springtime, it's going to be fantastic. Lots of cool amenities in Karuizawa as well, and it is known for a little bit of shopping, so if you wanna mix a little bit of the outdoor with a little bit of the modern indoor experience, that is going to be available for you as well. So all in all, I think Nagano is a fantastic alternative for nature lovers within similar proximity to Tokyo as Mount Takao. And worry not if you feel like you're gonna be missing out on the Soba experience, which is a little bit known around the Mount Takao area. A Soba is actually a regional specialty in Nagano, so you might actually enjoy an elevated experience in that regard as well. 
I've been rambling on for far too long. So if you have any additional questions, feel free to leave them in the comment section below. I'll be happy to expand on anything that I have talked about so far. My goal is really just to provide you with some insights, some up-to-date footage so you can better structure your trip. Of course, you're investing a lot of time and effort and resources into going on an international vacation potentially. So the last thing you want to do is feel like you're wasting some of those precious days. And uh, hopefully this video is going to help you in kind of structuring your itinerary in such a way to extract maximum value from your trip. Uh, I myself am hoping to return to Japan in the next couple months. So, you know, if there's any information you'd like me to cover from uh, my next adventure, whether it be, you know, a different city, a region, a volcano, a hole in the wall restaurant, uh, let me know in the comment section below. I'd be more than happy to get some footage and cover those topics if those are of interest. And uh, thank you so much for watching. I appreciate your viewership. I'll see you in the next one.